So this is uh So this is Prager U doing their best <laughs> in a documentary called Homelessness. The reality and the solution. They're going to give us a solution to this problem. Hmm. Let's see. And at some point, I can assure you, I will be taking you over to my thread about how homelessness is not just, or ending homelessness is not just ethical, but a good fiscal policy. I'm sure we'll visit that at some point soon. Oh, would you look at that? The hype train's ready to leave the station. Toot toot. Loud. It's pretty loud. Short documentaries. Nice. I love a 28 minute long documentary. Your first reaction might be to say, oh my gosh, all these poor people are on the street. This is terrible. But what's really important is are you really seeing the underlying issues? Why are they there? And that question is the most important question to answer. More than half a million Americans are homeless on any given night. The problem has grown worse in recent years. Why is the city as prosperous as San Francisco? I have a homeless problem. Homelessness is a disease, just like addiction. New encampments have been popping up throughout LA in the last five the months. The state of California can no longer treat homelessness and housing insecurity yesterday. as someone else's problem. We don't want to be the tip of the spear. How did we get here? We don't have time. And the paramedic. It's ca capitalism is the answer to the question. Look on the ground. What is it that you're seeing? You're seeing pieces of foil for fentanyl. You're seeing hypodermic uh -huh. needles. All uh -huh. kinds of evidence that says this is not a poverty problem. This is something else entirely. <sighs> wow. It's just like to blame it on... To not draw a line between drug use, especially fentanyl and stuff like that. And the lack of access to healthcare, and and how poverty interacts with that, and then the the addition of like of like how the homeless are treated, so that they have no place to go but a street. It's like this is a capitalism problem. At least five people that I knew on the street to fentanyl overdose. They don't want to listen, but a lot of it is because there's nobody teaching them about recovery, about accountability. Teaching them about recovery? Bro, it's a chemical dependency. It's a <laughs> it's like so much deeper than that. About Jeez. being productive and you can get out of this. Hey, okay. don't you want to be productive? Hey, wait, chat. Chat, 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 chat. I got a question. If you had to pick between the following states, what would you pick? Okay. State number one. You are productive. You are a member of society that has a job and you work 40 hours a week and you are, you are, you know, capable of living paycheck to paycheck. Or, Chad, if, if you were given the option between that and being real high, what would you choose? Now, imagine, imagine you were chemically dependent upon being real high. And imagine that being a productive member of society makes you sadder than it does to be real high. Huh? You ever thought about that? Have you ever thought that maybe, possibly, productivity being rewarding and fulfilling to the person that's, that, that does the productivity maybe could help people not even make the first bad choice? You could get preventative measures in there. And do you think, maybe, that if the contingent of people that were not being productive under your system, if those people tended to be Maybe. of the same class over and over and over and over and over, you think, if you wanted that system to succeed, 
You may invest in some ways to protect that specific class from the effects of being that class. Hmm. It's Gordon Vole. Thanks for going to Pontiac Jones. Hmm. Strange. Strange. You know what I'm saying? Get up off the ground. Nowhere is the homeless crisis more apparent than San Francisco. The Golden City spends hundreds of millions of dollars each year to address homelessness, yet the problem has exploded. They don't address homelessness. I don't think, uh, I don't think there's a there's a proper socialized um, apparatus to actually address homelessness anywhere in the United States. Uh, there are some pockets that do an okay job. Uh, oh yeah, this music is super manipulative. Politicians promise to end the crisis. We are going to eliminate uh, homelessness by the end of this year. Only to throw up their hands in defeat. So what went wrong? Why are some cities surrendering while others are reduced? Capitalism. 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 <laughs> Capitalism their homeless population because they're worried As in about many cases, real estate it boils values down to and not human lives and nearly all the cities in crisis have one policy in common Ooh, let's see housing first oh. and the housing first model is is premised on a very simple and almost intuitive idea that if you're homeless the problem is that you need a house and so to... it's one of the problems it's one of them, but it can't. It depends on how you do it, bro. Holy shit. Solve homelessness. We should merely give people homes. It's not merely. And now, this policy is being pushed from the top down. The program, as I understand it, was started out of New York for the very severely chronically homeless. Believe in the. Oh, no, 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 no. Just everybody. Just everybody. Who did this documentary? Prager you. Uh, so, I don't know the person responsible. I'm assuming he'll come up at some point. Maybe not. Um, so, you shouldn't have to be chronically homeless. Like, if you're chronically homeless, right? Odds are you've been on the streets long enough to be considered chronically so. That, like, you got longer term problems than just need a place to crash. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, it's not like people reset when they get, like, a shower after being homeless on and off for 15 years, dude. It's like... <laughs> we need to start with a baseline of care for all Americans, irrespective of their income. You need to decommodify housing at the basic level in all circumstances. Nobody, I don't care if they're homeless or otherwise, cr chronically so or just for the moment... I don't care. No single or double or maybe even triple bedroom apartment. None of these none of these rental properties should be right unless they're luxury places. None of them should be commodified. That's just is what it is. And you don't do that, a lot of things get held. But I mean like when with this, specifically they're dealing with the drug crisis, you need medical care as well freely freely so These not with rent and the bush administration got a hold of it implemented it in 2008 under the next administration it was rolled out as a one-size-fits-all solution and there's a lot of appeal to that idea that look if this person is going to be on the street for five years 10 years 15 years whatever it is why don't we just give them a house and not deal with all of the problems you see what this is this is means testing shit this is the problem right if you have to be on the streets for upwards of five years, has anyone been, uh, like, like homeless for any period of time, right? Like, I, I have, like, in between houses and stuff, and you have to crash and shit. Like, I've never, I, luckily, I'm very lucky, I've never, I've never, I've been very poor, but we've always made, got, gotten by. Um, I've never been, like, on the streets overnight, surviving. I've been on the streets overnight on accident. Um, <laughs> but never, uh, but that was more fun than, than, like, you know, I was just drunk and shit. Um, and it sucks. You don't, like, 
five five years like it's just crazy. That is a crazy standard to set for a human being, and then to just be like, okay, now are you fine? It's like maybe that person needs a little bit more more than that. Holy shit. Of picking them up, putting them in jail, putting them in a hospital, doing the rest of it. Let's find a central pace where we can treat them. The problem with this theory is that if you look at the numbers of what's actually causing people to be homeless, it's overwhelmingly problems with mental health and drug addiction. Wouldn't that be a socialized healthcare initiative? Hmm. It's almost like we could do it all. And Housing First requires no sobriety or treatment in order to receive permanent housing. No, there shouldn't, it shouldn't. You're gonna put. No, no, no. Somebody in housing and you don't provide any type of services for them. No treatment services, no case management, I mean, no anything for them. You just stick them in the house just so you don't have to look at them and they can do what they want in there. How are we really helping? I agree with that. I do agree with this. That's true. I don't know that they're coming at it from the correct answer, but yeah. You know what I mean? That is true. You can't just like simply not address the issues within a community. However, I I hope I hope the solution isn't something worse. I'm I'm going to be honest with you. The 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 proportions we have going on here with the how the goatee makes his mouth look super small is like making it's making me lose it. I'm like getting lost in his visage. Let's keep moving. I, you want to draw someone in and you want to help them get off the street. Okay. Right? So what they do is they just say, "Well, we're just going to allow the drugs anyway." And now you have all these people that are that are staying in shelters, that are staying in navigation centers, that are living in tent encampments using in massive quantities of meth, of fentanyl, heroin, crack cocaine. The city sanctions their drug use within that city sanctioned site that your tax dollars and my tax dollars are paying for. I mean, it brings tears to my eyes because it doesn't look at the individual. It doesn't look at what his or her potential is, and it doesn't help them develop that. To say that um, all we're going to do is help them aspire to be like that for the rest of their lives by sticking them in a house. Holy fucking shit. She's even got the, 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 the quivering, like, <sighs> suburban white, like, I just don't want the children to see. And not addressing, excuse me, the issues, it's, it's horrible. I think it's one of the most oppressive things we've done in the century, to be honest. Hmm, what do you, how, how, I would love to know. Let's get to the solution portion of this documentary and see what the solution is. Do you think it's socialized medicine and housing and education? And you think it's any of that? I think it's a safe place to uh, uh, use these drugs with uh, medical people on on standby with a focus on getting people unaddicted to these highly addictive things and maybe trying desperately as a society not to uh uh simply encourage the behavior that leads to the epidemics of these kinds of drugs hmm? or maybe we could all give them jobs at amazon it's with you and we'll do that and i'm so committed now to getting this changed yeah, we have to if we only From started teaching personal responsibility chat san francisco that's what i'm thinking if we teach personal responsibility cisco spent that's two the answer. billion dollars on three thousand new units of we could do it for free chat at a cost of six hundred and sixty six that's how easy addiction is more than double the median home price in america dude th <laughs> there's some i mean don't get me wrong there are people who are addicted to shit that are dog shit people. That's a thing. There's also people who aren't addicted to shit that are dog shit people. But like, <laughs> addiction is such a complex issue that we could address so simply, so simply through the lens of like, what do people need? Not like, what is the bottom line when addressing this issue? Awful. America. That money could be spent so See? much more effectively. No, what do people need, though? All right, you want to talk about money? It's shocking. Look at this. Okay, let's talk about money. It's shocking, is it? Chat, you want to talk about, mon about money? Let's do this. I did the math on this. Ending homelessness is good fiscal policy. We save $42,706 for 
for housing on just one person. So is if it, we'll read this as demonstrated through care coordination project housing first program, the direct cost to taxpayers is an average of sixty two thousand four hundred and seventy three dollars for high users of the system while homeless. So uh, this is if someone is homeless, um, you know all the things that go into uh, uh, going through that cost taxpayers a certain amounts. A lot of this is incarceration. A lot of this is drug busts and, and the problems that that, uh, that takes and uh, uh, health care costs, stuff like that. Whereas the average post-housing cost, and this is, I know, a little bit big, um, the average post-housing cost is estimated at $19,767, resulting in an annual cost reduction of $42,706 for those who remain housed. So simply by putting someone that is unhoused in a house, in a home, the average savings that a taxpayer, since we're bitching about taxpayers, the average savings per homeless person is almost $43,000 a year, right? This is pretty easy math. There are an estimated 580,466 people without reliable shelter in what some call the greatest country in the world. So, so quick head math. How much do we save times how much is it? Oh, look at that. $24.78 billion saved if we simply house all homeless folks in the U.S. And guess what? How much would it cost to end homelessness? About $20 billion to end homelessness in the U.S. Could be done overnight. Overnight. If you do it, it pays for itself plus a $4 billion surplus. $4 billion dollar surplus we make four billion dollars as a society as americans i thought we cared about the budget y'all simply by socializing housing (laughs) imagine if we also did this for everybody else imagine the savings chat wow talking to me how little innovation we have because because everything is permanent supportive housing or bust and everything else in between is just keeping you alive until you get there the problem is is that half the people on the street aren't going to be alive to realize that housing los angeles felt the impact of housing first immediately is this will Witt? reverend this andy Mary bales from the union rescue mission says he saw it coming in 2014 when the national thought process on homelessness yeah. shifted towards that a housing process. first model he says he saw donations to the missions on skid row plummet we had foundations that used to give us a million dollars shift to housing first only we had another foundation that shifted that gave us 750000 And only now is his intuition providing proof. This study, released this week from the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development, showing since the recovery services decreased, mm-hmm. homelessness went up more than 15% nationwide. Compounding the problem, cities like Austin, Texas, have legalized street camping. Addicts poured out of shelters and treatment, back to where drugs, alcohol and crime abound. In Austin, homeless deaths rose by 25% in a matter of months. The number that should absolutely horrify Americans is Uh that in LA, you have about three individuals die on the streets a day. If you look at this relative Huh? Huh? COVID deaths? Hello? What? We don't worry about that, though. Hello? to the whole homeless community in LA, this means that they have death rates higher than soldiers that we sent off to Iraq or Afghanistan. First of all, it's no place to live, right? You Living on in a tent or in a, uh, in a doorway, it is so uh, substandard, right, for anybody. This is not a way for a human in, the, in this year uh, to ever live. Salvation Army, huh? 
There's no infrastructure for it. Where's the toilet? Where's the sanitation? Where's the ability to even get uh, help when you're sick, right? It's not there. I agree with that. We should socialize all of these things. <laughs> In May of 2021, it's so easy. Austin residents voted to reinstate the city's <clears throat> camping ban. I just believe that today is just no accountability in society as a whole for people's actions anymore. It's oh like boy. I'll use the bathroom any way I want to, whether it's in front of kids or not. I'm just saying about what I see. And I'm still going to serve those that are in need or somebody that's going to always be less fortunate than me. We've worked with programs that when they first started, like taking people off of the street, housing programs, people would live in houses and live in rooms and still like they were living on the street. They wouldn't sleep in the bed. Everything was close to them. Mm -hmm. Paranoia set in. They didn't trust anybody being in there. They didn't even know how to live inside. Are we okay. providing housing for homeless people so they can get off the street so we don't have to look at them? Are we providing them housing so they can be able to sustain themselves and be able to live? Are we going to do this from a leftist perspective, though? They keep saying the, what, what like, a liberal would say. But what's the answer, though? They keep saying this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, we don't want to just, like, put people... Criminalize homelessness. There we go. A thousand individuals dying on the streets every year is not compassionate. And merely saying, we're going to let people camp on the streets because we think it's uncompassionate to push them off it is not the right path. Places like San Diego and others say, listen, if we're going to push you off the streets, we're going to give you an alternative. And according to people who have experienced homelessness firsthand, the root of the problem is mental illness and addiction, not housing. What do you mean not housing? What are you talking about? It is also housing. When we talk about housing, we're not talking about that we just simply do not have enough buildings. We don't have enough buildings. Nobody is talking about buildings. They're talking about affordability of those buildings. They're talking about people being able to pay their fucking rent, dog. That's the point. That's what housing is. Housing is a problem with the commodification of housing. Not that there's not enough houses. Fools. M Drive, thanks for following. Good morning. The meeting will come to order. Welcome to the Thursday, February 11th meeting of the Public Safety and Neighborhood Services Committee. Agenda one is a hearing on the San Francisco Recovery Summit Working Group Report and Findings. Tom Wolf, I'd like to invite you to speak. Good morning, everyone. Uh, only three years ago today, I was sleeping on a piece of cardboard in the doorway on Golden Gate and Hyde in the Tenderloin, severely addicted to heroin. I am living proof that there is a direct correlation between homelessness and substance use in the city. You can. Study has shown that only 20 to 25 percent of houseless suffer from mental illness. This claim is used to demonize the homeless. Um, yeah, and that's that's higher per capita, right? But that 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 makes sense. Um, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I don't think I don't think that there's any reason that mental health issues or addiction issues should even be things that can demonize you. But yeah, so yes, that's what it is. Build all the housing and get everybody off the street housed. But if you're struggling with addiction or mental illness, you're just housed with drug addiction and mental illness. Yep, that's better. People say that's a that's definitely a better thing. By the way, we don't need to not house them. We need to house them and. Hey, oh, I lost my job and I became homeless. But then you have to ask, why did you lose your job? I lost my job because I was going to work and shooting up in the bathroom on my lunch break and then going back and sitting on my desk and passing out. From what I saw and the people that I encountered on the street, it's about eight out of every 10 people that, that are visible. He says eight out of 10 people that people are visible. That we see every day out on the street. That we see every day. But there's a lot of people that... that <laughs> Do they think that every person that is homeless doesn't... Like, like they all go to, like... What they, it's like Skid Row. Like, what the fuck? There's a lot of people that, that live in neighborhoods. There's a lot of people that live under bridges and are way further away from that. And some people are at those certain places because they are the ones that are on the drugs. 
and you stay you stick around that place because you can get the drugs easy and you're not far from where you can get them. So it's not like it's just such a weird way to look at it. Oh, uh, that's the one I see. So that's how it is now. It's like, nah, dude. That's that's just how it was from your point of view. Living in tents, etc. They're struggling with addiction. A recent study agreed. Let's Over 75% yeah. of unsheltered have a drug or alcohol addiction. And a similar number also have a severe mental health disorder. I was a child support officer for the city and county of San Francisco. It was a very stressful job working with a lot of domestic violence victims. I became homeless because of my addiction. And I think a lot more people do become homeless because of addiction than what people think. You know, scientifically, we know that addiction is a disease. So my survival instincts got basically corrupted by these drugs. I also needed drugs in the same kind of way that I needed food. I would do anything to get them. Making up lies to get money from my family while I was out there. And while I was on the street homeless, even then, I still thought I had some control over my life because all I really wanted in my addiction was the drugs. That's how powerful it is. Some people criticize me for some of the stuff that I say, but you know what? It can't. Bro, aren't you here? Telling me that folks that do a fuckload of drugs are not to be trusted. And then you sit here, comb your hair a little bit, and tell me that you will now, now you get to be trusted. You don't get to have it both ways, dude. Like, what? <laughs> Come on, man. Your intentions don't necessarily matter if you're just fucking wrong about it. Like... <laughs> can't just be all touchy-feely out there touchy because feely. being on the street is not touchy-feely it's not about touchy-feely bro it's not about making fuck i'm not worried about homeless people feeling uh validated or some shit i just want material change in their life for the better and that would include but be not limited to the decommodification of survival necessities in america it's ridiculous cities like san francisco and los angeles fail to realize the power of addiction <laughs> Cap and Carl. This may be shitty, but maybe he started doing drugs uh, uh, due to the stress of being overworked, underpaid, and at a job that undersatisfied and was understaffed. Hmm, maybe. Maybe, maybe some capitalism had to do with it. Do you think that maybe it would be okay if uh, you didn't have your survival uh, called into question if you did get addicted? Maybe you wouldn't lose your house? You wouldn't have anything to lose other than you know, the non-survival, like the things you want in life, you could absolutely lose. The things you need in life that that a, that a, a, a state can provide you? Don't have to have, lose access to that. Mr. Whiskers, thank you for the two months. Tier two! And dangerously believe that addiction is a choice, not a disease. They condone this behavior and even help promote it. Damn, One fast. of the main policies that I, I feel like I'm constantly battling is the city's obsession with harm reduction. The baseline goal of harm reduction is to keep you alive long enough in the hopes that you'll find recovery. But what it's morphed into in San Francisco is something different. It's really blurring the lines between harm reduction and then drug promotion at the same time. How this is playing out. Drug promotion? On our streets is that instead of encouraging treatment, what we say, just keep on going. Every program that has a program has to have a harm reduction policy within it. One of those requirements that's listed really down at the bottom and buried in there is that you need to have clean drug paraphernalia available at all times for the residents of your drug rehab. They'll hand out a pamphlet saying, here are some safe ways for you to use fentanyl so you don't overdose. Make sure you use a clean needle, make sure you clean the area that you're going to inject. Make sure you register it before you inject the needle inside your your uh, vein. This is all good. And then at the end of all that, it'll say, enjoy your high. Here I am, I'm trying to kick heroin, man. And I'm in the drug rehab and I walk by the table every day with syringes and cookers. Okay, so I this is obviously different, right? So I I disagree with how how that is uh like if, if you get if you're trying to fix people, right? Again, it's it's a multi-pronged approach. I agree in general with the idea that if you simply give people a free house, do nothing else, like a free roof over their head, do nothing else, and then put needles in front of them all the time, sure, I guess. But, like, they don't have access to health care. They have access to a clinic where they can get clean 
paraphernalia for the drugs. They don't have access to actual health care. This isn't health care access. This is access to, to, like, simply be a little bit safer. That's it. It is good, but they're not doing it on the premises. This isn't this isn't a heroin hotel. This isn't they don't have nurses on staff. They don't have mental health people being able to protect them. They don't have like Oh. <laughs> uh, yes. This is this is like along with the other steps is totally fine. You want a heroin hotel? Definitely something like that. Not necessarily a heroin hotel, but like the idea, the idea, and and what's shown good promise uh, anywhere that it's practiced is basically, if people are, if if you know people are going to be addicted to drugs, right? And people are going to be addicted to drugs. Opiates are addicting. It will happen. Human body chemistry just simply cannot prevent it from getting addicted at a certain point, right? It it occurs. It also feels real good. It's just a fact. It does feel real good, but it's not good for you, right? Lots of things are like that. Um, it's not good for you. So the idea would be that you go to a safe place to do drugs safely, and while you and, and while you have access to those things, medical professionals wean you off of these things, and you have the opportunity, since uh, we decommodify survival necessities, to live a fulfilled life in recovery after you get to that point, because you have access to food and shelter and internet. And, and education and healthcare. And so you could always go back and improve yourself and, and, and really have a shot. A lot of the problem with drug addiction and homelessness and the interaction is that under our current, current system, even if you were to be able to get a house, there's no upward mobility. No one's hiring you because you need a job to succeed in this place. You can't go to school. You certainly can't afford healthcare. Like, a lot of times the best place to go is just to jail and like this isn't this isn't helping necessarily it's mitigating some of the overall harm um but yeah i mean i mean you have to do everything you can't just do a little bit a foil and and straws looking right at me and pipes and you wonder why nobody's getting clean you make it easier to get high and so hard to get treatment in san francisco that it hurts and it's literally killing people. Capitalism. In 2019, the city saw a 70% increase over 2018 in overdose deaths. And during the pandemic, San Francisco went so far as to deliver free drugs and alcohol to homeless staying in hotel rooms that the city paid for. What happens when a city plays drug dealer? In 2020, the death rate among San Francisco homeless doubled. Many of these lives could have been saved. If, if only for proper COVID protocols, probably. Like, come on. <laughs> we know how to fix this problem. And the, the good news is that leaders across the country are doing just communities. that. Homelessness is not an issue in California. It is the issue. When I first took office... Is he running for governor? Is this just an ad for governor now? It quickly became clear to me oh that the search for consensus... Oh, on the perfect thing to do was turning into non-action, not just here in the city, but up and down the entire state of California. Mm -hmm. I knew we had to do things differently. We gotta do. Allowing somebody to live on a sidewalk in our city streets is condemning them to die on the street. That was unacceptable. I do not allow tent encampments in San Diego on our sidewalks anymore. Every individual has a right to shelter. Do that. But if we provide that shelter, you have an obligation to use it. So I started a series of new bridge shelters in San Diego. It's a bridge between living on the street and being able to stand on your own two feet in that place on your own. Are I don't want you good? off the street for, for a night or for a week, but we want to help provide a safe, clean, sanitary, and supportive environment to get you off the streets for good. If you've got a need, you're willing to work together, we can fix things 90% of the time. Before we had the, the bridge shelters, people had no choice. And that's why the, the judges, they wouldn't enforce the policy because there was no alternative to being homeless because there was no place to start the process to get off the street. Everybody drank the housing first Kool-Aid, which I knew there was a city council meeting. Is this not housing first? Is this? Meeting and they said, we're not gonna do shelters anymore because we're gonna do housing first. And I said on camera with all the new Jays outside, this is gonna be a disaster. 
because now people don't have any place to go to wait for that housing that may or may not ever come. Look at the billions and billions and billions of dollars being wasted right now in communities like Seattle, Portland, what is this? LA, San Francisco, San Jose, billions of dollars by allowing people to kill themselves publicly. Where you could take that same money and invest in people on the street and say, you're better than this. KYS privately chat. Bridge shelters are so much more than a shelter. First. Housing navigation, how do we match you with resources to get that apartment of your own? Dealing with mental health. I have a feeling that this particular place uh, has some ties to uh, uh, things that I, I might find unsavory. Would anyone would anyone like to illuminate me on, on what this program does that I don't like? Because I would be pretty surprised if this was a socialized uh, situation. Health and substance abuse issues. Deal with job training issues. Bringing all of those services job underneath training. one location. Job training. One of the changes that I made was establish a series of storage centers for personal belongings. Free of charge. It has allowed our streets to be much cleaner. Again, it was the right thing to do by changing that dynamic, providing the incentive to do the right thing, but also the consequences if you do the wrong thing. What are the consequences? I'm proud that we're the only urban county in California where homelessness has gone down the last two years. Um, and, and there's nothing more I like than to interact with somebody who maybe was a skeptic of what we were doing in terms of putting up a bridge shelter or the help and support that we were given to come back to me and say, Mr. Mayor, you know what? This worked out pretty well. San Diego. How do you measure homelessness? Is it an eyeball test? Reduced its unsheltered homeless population by more than 20% in recent years. What does San Diego understand that its neighbors don't? that compassion must work with accountability, and that by banning street camping, we can incentivize people to seek better opportunities. Back to the old days where you would have tent encampments, uh, that was not helpful to the individuals, obviously, that were living on the streets. It's not helpful for your neighborhoods, for your business. That's the wrong approach. That's the failed status quo approach. If I was on the street and you'd come up to me when I was sitting there hitting my heroin on my foil and they said, hey, hey if you said, hey, Tom, you want to go to rehab? Do you have a drug problem? I would have, my answer to you would have been, what drug problem? I'm just chilling out here, man. That's what most people say. I agree with Mayor Faulkner on the issue of street camping and that so long as we have a shelter bed that we can offer them, they should be obligated to take that shelter bed at least for a day or two. Right, to just try it, what it's like getting off the street. In Austin, some individuals are taking action into their own hands. And Alan Graham believes there's a better approach. We believe very powerfully that government should only play a subsidiary oh role to you and I. See his hat? I think that's some bread and fish right there. In mitigating these profound human Serving needs that our society explores. What we want to do is encourage people to move That's out of that transactional mentality that we're going to go build, you know, $600 gabillion worth of housing over here, and we're going to put people in there, and it's going to solve this housing problem. It's not. The people that we serve here are the hardest to house. The average age of the people who live here is 58 years old. The average length of time on the streets is 10 years. These are folks that genuinely, they never- What is this, a fucking- <laughs> it looks like they work for Scrip at his labor factory. What the fuck? Never thought they would get off the streets. They were certain that, that they would be on the streets until they died. What we believe is that they don't, the these aren't like indentured to come folks, are them, they? Right, that it is all of us. These are and just, what they happens just live here, right? in our culture today is that we've abdicated responsibility for that to the government, and we've said, city hall, state government, federal government, this is your problem to solve. Yeah, it is. If Okay, so so here's why it's, this is the a really simple reason why the, it's the government's fault um, and responsibility. If the government imposes conditions that cause you to live a certain way, it is their responsibility to mitigate the issues that arise. 
So there you go. It's I'm just trying to teach a little personal responsibility, okay? A little personal responsibility to America. America, it is your personal responsibility to house your citizens. It is. Because you caused a system in which they need to have a certain amount of money to remain housed. So, if you're not just going to give them the money to do it, then it's your fault if they become homeless. And it's not. It's a human problem. It's all of us. When you decide on one way, you're limiting innovation. And that's really what's happened. Innovation? Community first. The movement is an innovation. Lots of people thought that this model could never work. We continue to invest in relationship. We continue to show up for each other. And it turns out that community actually does work. Community First Village gives homeless individuals something housing first policies can never. Do they give them jobs? Is this a fucking indentured servant? Please. please a family. Please. People family. holding each other accountable. Please don't. Supporting say. each other. By providing a sustainable ecosystem for these individuals to thrive in, drug addiction, alcohol use, and other harmful behaviors have plummeted. How do you bring somebody... Depression is a harmful behavior. That's a pretty good way to put it. ...body into purposeful That's living. That's pretty good. And when you look kitty. at what's happening inside look this that kitty cat. what they're being given is a community. Uh, organic farming operation, a blacksmithing shop, a wood shop, an art house, all the things that allow people to wake up in the morning and have purpose. Well, there's rules to live here. Oh, boy. You must pay rent. Rent, you say? And do you know that we don't have a rent collection problem here and never have? Because everybody knows that they must pay rent. When you pay rent, it turns out that you're invested. You have skin in the game. And every human needs to have skin in the game. And that is what is lacking uh, out there on the streets. Incentives and accountability work. The Dell Fund in New York City has transformed tens of thousands. How do they pay rent, bro? I'm anti skin personally. <laughs> so they're just landlords. Oh, yeah. How do you pay rent? Community First Village? Is that what it's called? Community First Village. Huh? Mobile loaves and fishes? <sighs> 51 acre master plan community that provides affordable permanent housing and supportive community for men and women coming out of chronic homelessness. <sighs> 100 RV park or homes, 130 micro homes. They have five laundry, restroom, shower facilities. It's a campground, sort of, but it seems nice enough. Phase two. Apply for a home. Oh, boy. I, I want to see how much it is. Oh, boy. How much is rent? Huh? 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 I don't want to... Oh, I'm not. I, you can look it up. I don't know how to even find that, dude. Learn more link. <sighs> Let's see how much sponsor a home is. I'm going to go here. I don't know what's going to pop up. If I... Sponsor a home. They run a They have a hundred and fifty million dollar campaign goal. A hundred and fifty million dollars. 
Their, that's their goal. Wow. It's impressive. I, 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 get involved. Tour the village? Hello? I need to know how much rent. The rent is due. Get out there and get given beige. Get the Bee Gees going. I'm not going to sign up for this. Can I... Is there... An, okay. Let's read the fact at least. We'll just read that. Fact! Fact, chat. What if I have a criminal record? Does that disqualify me? Having a criminal record does not disqualify you. However, an applicant who is currently or has ever been on the sex offender registry will automatically be disqualified. Has committed a misdemeanor assignment within the past seven years. Committed a violent crime. Demonstrated a pattern through registers. Okay. Uh, all tax exempt, I imagine. Oh, yeah. Uh, condition three is that you have to have a fucking job. Wait, what? Condition three. Complete a... Wait. In the housing application? What do you mean? Oh, in the application itself. To be eligible to live at the community, you must be chronically homeless. Chronic homelessness is defined as living in a place not meant for human habitation, a safe haven, or an emergency shelter for at least one year, or four episodes within the past three years, and having at least one disability. Have have been in Travis County for at least one year. Have the ability to pay rent. This could include SSI, SSDI, working off-site, or on-site employment through community works. What did I say? Community works. Is there? Do we have community works stuff? What we do? Volunteers? Community works. Looks like a company town to me. Yep. This is not seeming very, very good, if I do say so myself. <sighs> oh, yeah. So you saw people doing that. That was an arts and crafts. Car care. They have me mechanics. Culinary. And look, I don't have any problem with people having jobs or anything. Right? I think it's totally fine if you... Like, this is commune behavior. Except it isn't, because they don't share in the profit of this place, do they? No, they do not. <laughs> it's like a cat. It's like a, it's like the idea of a commune, but if you were to capitalize the whole thing, very fucking nice. Good job. Thousands of lives through its ready, willing, and able program, which combines paid work, transitional housing, and you should probably look at it, huh? Comprehensive social services including sobriety support. An independent study by Harvard University found that ready, willing, and able graduates are 60% less likely... How long uh, till they make them use the landlord's own company currency to pay for... Likely to be convicted of a felony three years after exiting the Paid program. Paid work. Researchers at the University of Alabama tested a similar hypothesis by providing homeless with housing conditioned upon drug and alcohol treatment. They found that 64% of residents maintain sobriety. Instead of pumping billions of dollars into housing first, it's time to use performance-based funding that rewards Look the programs. Look up how long someone can rent there. Wait, what? Was there was there a limit? Was there a limit? Their website's slow. I don't know why. Can I have pets? Up to two pets. Income amount requirement. You must have enough income to pay your rent, utilities, and necessities of life. There are no minimums or maximums. You just need to be able to make a comfortable pay... To comfortably pay your rent. Wow. If you don't have a source of income, can I still live here? 
All neighbors will pay rent on time. If you don't have the source of income when you apply, that's okay. However, you will not be able to move in until you developed a thorough and sustainable plan to pay your rent. We do have contract job opportunities for 1099 income. <laughs> Fucking, they have contracting jobs. Holy fucking shit. They're not even full employees. Eat a fucking bag of dicks. These people are literally trying to get cheap labor from the fucking homeless population and making them pay rent to do it. Insane. Insane, chat. That truly make a difference. For the price of one housing unit in San Francisco, we could build dozens of transitional shelters. Transitional shelter. They're calling them transitional because the idea is you're supposed to work your way out of them, bro. Or fund proven treatment programs. Meanwhile, Take our elected officials dollars, must benefits, promote profit, policies yeah. that address the root causes of homelessness. What? I think twenty-five to three hundred and eighty dollars a month still. Everybody's aim Insane. should be is this self-sufficiency. We don't want people Insane. in this perpetual cycle. We want financial independence. We want emotional independence. We want independence that's perhaps free of a substance that's keeping them down. We always are told that me and Craig, we're not the most compassionate individuals in the world. We take the compassionate approach by making it happen for people. And making it happen also means- they're even, they're even, They even agree we're not the most compassionate fucking people. But we're doing, we're walking through the motions of compassion, though, chat. Sometimes telling good. them no. But what we don't do is we don't give up on anyone. No matter what they do, how they do it, we're going to be there for them. That's what keeps us going and keeps us moving for whether we have no money or not. We will still do this work. Homelessness is a humanitarian crisis, but there are solutions. By denying the solutions, we excuse ourselves from making hard choices that can transform lives. It's easy to hand someone an apartment key and think that the problem is solved. It's hard work getting them to treatment, holding them accountable, and helping them return to a productive, safe, and healthy life. But that work must be done if we truly care for the most vulnerable among us. Thank you for watching this video. Shut the fuck up. These people are monsters, dude. <laughs> Exploiting the... Okay, it's you. Uh, exploiting the, the, dis the, the desperate actions of people that don't have enough economic means. That's what I did to Sarah. You exploited me? She didn't have economic means, chat. <laughs> How are you able to hold the street right now? So I'm not joking. <laughs> that was pretty good, though. I've, I held it for a little bit, though. That's pretty okay. This was pretty good. That's fine. It's not bad. I love you. Let me do. <sighs> the boy, bye, dog. Come here, bud. Darwin, buddy. Ooh. Come on, that was a rib shot. Come on, up. Come here, come here. Hi. I wonder if you'll bring your butt. You bring your butt. You bring your butt. Bring it up. I'm coming. I'm coming. Bring your butt. I got you. I got you. Her ramble was just a gorilla. Hold on. Don't don't freak out. You'll hurt your leg, bud. Don't freak out. <laughs> <laughs> He's a boy. His breath smells bad. Blech. Blech. Who wants to bet those superior stats they listen is because they reject applicants they seem risky they deem risky. Uh well yeah, I mean if you if you tell people you're gonna make them lose their their ability to survive 
if they, uh, you know, smoke some of the drugs. Yeah. Needs a dental treat for the stink breath. I think he just ate. Excuse me. Stink breath. <laughs> what a good boy. He's just a bean. My wrist hurts. Can you hear it? Can you hear that? This is a little snap. I'm dying, chat. I'm dying. I can hear it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm the only one that matters. I can hear it. <laughs> 